Hello and welcome back to Digital Assets Daily. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in your corner of the world. One in five people could have access to central bank digital currencies within three years. Central banks collectively representing a fifth of the world's populations say they are likely to issue a general purpose digital currency in the next three years, according to a survey from the Bank for International Settlements, also known as the BIS. Following up on a survey from last year, BIS quizzed 66 central banks covering 75% of the world's population and 90% of its economic output about their intentions regarding CBDCs. Some 80% of respondents up from 70% a year ago say they are both engaged in some of the CBDC work with half looking at wholesale and general purpose options. Meanwhile, 40% have moved beyond conceptual research to experiments or proof of concepts and 10% have made it to the pilot stage. According to the BIS, which we know one of their top places is Cambodia. The survey reveals a divide between advanced economies and emerging market economies, the EMEs, of the 10% of banks that are at the pilot stage, all are from EMEs. This is partly because these countries have a greater incentive to find a cash alternative that improves financial inclusion and payments efficiency and security. Although 70% of the central banks say it is unlikely that they will <clears throat> issue a CBDC in the foreseeable future, 10% think it is likely they will issue a general purpose option in the short term. With China among the number, this would represent 20% of the global population. Meanwhile, interest in wholesale CBDCs appeared to have cooled. Half the central banks said that in eight, 2018 they were likely to issue one in the short term, now say they are less likely to do so. As BIS notes, this is consistent with research published by the Bank of Canada and Bank of Thailand, which found that DLT faces big challenges to improve on current arrangements. On non-government-backed digital currencies, central banks are seeing no widespread usage. However, with Facebook's Libra looming, 60% are considering the monetary and financial stability of stablecoins. And as listed, according to the Bank of Canada, stablecoins they have physically listed are XRP and XLM. Next article, Hawaii Senate files bill to allow banks to offer cryptocurrency custodial services. We had posted something a few days ago on our Twitter, but this is the most recent update in regards to the article. Five lawmakers in Hawaii, a state in the U.S., have proposed a bill that could enable banks to hold and manage digital assets in their custody. This bill, Senate Bill SB 2594, was introduced last week and has passed its first reading. The bill was sponsored by four Democratic senators, Gil Revere, D23, Sharon Moriwaki, D2, D12, Les Ihara, D10, Stanley Chang, D9, and one Republican Senator, Kurt Favela, R19. It also has bipartisan backing. Once approved, the legislation would make it legal for Hawaiian banks to hold digital assets such as virtual currencies, digital securities, open blockchain tokens, and digital consumer assets on behalf of their customers. Part of the SB 2594 would put forward to the authorization of law courts to hear claims concerning digital assets. Hence, if passed, would equally enable Hawaiian courts to handle digital asset-related cases. The development is coming at a good time as it could turn things around for crypto-related businesses in the state. Given that Hawaii has been among the regions with stringent requirements for crypto firms, for instance, Coinbase, 
One of the leading crypto exchanges had to stop its operations in the state due to a mandate by the state's Division of Finance Institutions in 2017, asking crypto-licensed businesses to hold cash reserves that are equal to customers' crypto holdings in their custody. The bill, however, has a tendency to level up the path for cryptocurrencies and digital assets in general, as it would probably reinforce the steps by banks in providing support for these assets. Nonetheless, banks will have to maintain reserves like a trusted company. According to the document citing Section 412, 8-202, which states... Every trust company shall have on hand at all times in actual money of the United States an equal an amount equal to at least 12% of all agency credit balances payable on demand and accounts payable, plus at least 5% of all agency credit balances payable on time, provided that such reserve may be deposited payable on demand in banks and other trust companies approved by the commissioner or may be cash in the vaults of the trust company. And as Brad Garlinghouse had mentioned, banks will hold cryptocurrencies and digital assets. I want to finish this off with regards to the contrarian investor. Sometimes it gets a little frustrating. Sometimes it takes a little while. But as it says, it takes nothing to join the crowd. It takes everything to stand alone. Having finished this video, I want to finalize it with not financial advice. This is entertainment purposes only. Thank you guys for all of your support, and we'll catch you in the next one.